Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, this is Good Owl Games and welcome to April's Monthly Roundup, the video where I talk to you about some of the changes to my board game collection. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome to the April monthly roundup video. This one hopefully will be a little shorter than the previous months um, and if you haven't seen that and want to know why you can check that out if you like. I make one of these videos every month. Um, for those of you new and uninitiated, welcome and what I do here is I break this video down into a couple of different sections. So the first is I tell you about new games I've acquired and um, the second is I tell you about kind of what I've been playing and then the third section is kind of personal stuff about me and a bit about the channel and depending on what you're interested in you can hop around I have timestamps in the video but obviously I would love for you to stay and watch the whole thing because you know it's fun and that's why we make videos so yeah so this month less games than last month um in a way I'm almost thankful hurrah um but there you know has been plenty going on here nonetheless as you may have noticed around you um and I'll put that in I'll talk about that a little bit later at the end because you know that takes time and you're probably here for board games I know I am so I'm going to jump right into the first game acquired this month um and this was kind of fun actually um and this is Llama Land this is published by Lookout Spieler and it comes from Phil Walker Harding I believe and that's kind of the reason why this game attracted me in the first place. Um, Phil Walker Harding has made some really interesting games, um, lots of things that we particularly liked here. Um, I could try and name a few but I bet I get them wrong. I think Gizmos anyway is definitely one of those um, and a couple of other things but what I've noticed is that it doesn't seem to have a particular style. Um, they seem to design little like everything um, but they're always kind of interesting um, and so when we spotted Llama Land because you know everybody loves a good llama um, in our local board game store we couldn't help but bring it home and I was a little dubious because it's a polyonimo game really there are tetris shaped pieces and I'm not normally a huge fan of those because you have to well, there's lots of games where you just have to make the pieces fit on your board or do particular things. But Llama Land does something a little bit different. So what Llama Land is all about is that you are a farmer and you're trying to gather crops and have room for llamas in your fields, as far as I'm aware. Um, and what the game does is that you have these polyonimo pieces and you want to lay them out in such a way that when you cover up a resource with another um, polyonimo piece you'll gain the resources um, so you can build upwards and outwards and I think that's what's actually quite interesting about this game is the 3D aspect to it um, the way to kind of get points is through kind of completing particular goals so you know have a llama on every level or you know that that kind of thing so you always have something to work towards um, but you do have to kind of bid on these so you want to get there quickly um, I have to say I actually quite enjoyed this like I knew it was kind of cute and adorable you might recognize some of the art it looks kind of like Altiplano very I think it's the same artist um so it's very kind of fun and cutesy but there's a good bit of game to here too I was worried it would just be we would match the pieces and things like that um but I I liked it a lot especially because you're building your own board right so you're building up and building out so there's not a ton of interaction between you and the other players um there's a good supply of tetra shapes that you get to choose from and you do get to choose them it's not you know something that you know you have to draft or randomly pick um so i really enjoyed this it was light um but fun and it still had like good i don't know gameplay behind it not i don't want i don't know don't know if i call it strategy i haven't played enough of it yet for that um but i liked it a lot i felt there was game in it and fun so um yeah that's llama land um i don't know if anyone else has played it yet i'd like to see more of it it also makes for some beautiful photographs because you've got little 3d llamas so who wouldn't want those i'm not gonna lie i'm having an unusually tough time filming this today my brain is just falling out of my ear but bear with me folks i'll do my best um, so second on this list of arrivals slash acquisitions is a Kickstarter and this is for the Root Marauders expansion. Um, as some of you probably know by now, I have a kind of a fractured relationship with Root um, because when it came out and everyone was excited about it, um, I played it, tried it and sold it. 
and then returned it again at a later date to my, to my keeping. Um, and now I really, really enjoy it. And I do have all of the other expansions. So when this came up on Kickstarter, um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of surprised that, um, I decided to back it and to get the expansion. But you know what? I think when you really enjoy a particular game, it's nice to be able to support it and to give something to it, right? If you really enjoy something, you know, why wouldn't you want to see it made? Um, so yeah, so I'm really delighted to see this expansion show up. So what's in it exactly? Okay, well, I've only played it once, okay? So you'll have to bear with me here. Um, so in the Marauders expansion, as far as I've gotten so, there are two new factions, um, one of which are Badgers. Um, and the Badgers wanted to kind of collect relics to find them out in the board and then bring them back to like their bases to discover what they were. Um, they were kind of... I don't know, they remind me a little bit of the the birds in the base box, the, that faction, where you have cards at kind of the top of the board that you can activate for different locations to do different things. So there's kind of that whole, the whole set of cards you have to adhere to. But in this case, you don't have to, you can elect to do these things. Um, and I like that, I felt, I felt like that was a nice option. And I was playing against the red mice or red rats if you want to call them that i'll put down the names they're 100 something something um i'll write it down properly and they were aggressive and very very scary because they were basically burning down places and then roving around in packs and attacking things um, it was kind of terrifying um <laughs> but i have to say um it looked really interesting to play um and i always want i always want that when i play a game i want to everyone to sit down and play a particular faction and go oh i really want to try that or i really want to see how that works and you definitely get that feeling here um there are also um i think hirelings and things that come with the expansion as well but i haven't played with those yet um so boohoo but I'll get there eventually. But um, you know what? It just seems like another great addition to Root. It's just more factions, more fun things to play with. Um, and I, I, can't, I can't be mad about that. I can only be happy. Um, I'm the sort of person that really loves having a lot of options when you play your game. It definitely when it comes to picking races or different character types. Um, I always appreciate, you know, being able to switch them around and change things up and have new ways to play the game by playing, you know, a faction who plays differently and Root does that really well. So yeah, I can't really say much about this except it's just more Root goodness. That's kind of what it is. And if you like Root, well, then you're you're probably definitely going to like this. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so that was nice having a Kickstarter show up. That's kind of a, a rare moment around here. So the final purchase of the month is a game that's got a huge amount of popularity right now. You may possibly have heard of it. And this is Ark Nova. Um, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't hugely hyped to get this like everyone else was. Um, but the reason I have got a copy is kind of fun, actually. And I thought I'd, sh I thought I'd share this with you, which is that um, a friend of mine, he has wanted a copy of Ark Nova since forever, since before Christmas. I think I think even like, you know, many moons ago, he had this pre-ordered, but they all kept falling through. Um, and I know he has a copy on the way currently, but it still hadn't arrived and it's taking a lot of time. And we were all like jointly, you know, wishing the postman would arrive at his house so that uh, he could get his game and then of course the unthinkable happened which is that our local game shop got in a, co a copy of Ark Nova and it meant that you know he was unable to buy it because he'd already bought a copy but here it was and after all this waiting um so what we did um uh, myself and my husband while we were we were out on Saturday um drove to the game shop bought a copy of Ark Nova and delivered it to him um and that was just really really fun um I think as gamers uh, or, or I suppose as collectors I guess too you all know the feeling of waiting for something to come out that you've been waiting for for ages you like yeah you I bet you can feel it right now just thinking about it where you're watching the postman and you can't wait for it to show up uh, and I you know I, I totally wanted to help with that if possible but it does mean that I'm getting a copy of Ark Nova slightly sooner than I had thought I would I wasn't in a rush to get it um so I'm looking forward to you know seeing what it's about everybody seems to be raving about it um and that I get you know you hear comparisons to terraforming Mars which I'm a big fan of but it's got animals it's beautiful it's big and I really like the look of how the player boards look it looks like a mini castles of burgundy with some extra stuff so I've been kind of excited to try it out anyway and the best part of this is that this means my friend's going to teach us Ark Nova so we don't need to read the rule book 
<laughs> See, that was my plan all along. Um, so yeah, I'm curious to hear people's thoughts on Ark Nova if you have played it because, you know, it seems to be pretty darn popular right now. Um, so it'd be nice to get some kind of real world insights. And is there any game that you have been waiting excitedly for like that that has been like the next big thing you just you just couldn't wait? Um, I'm trying, I was trying to think what I was so excited for myself. I'll have to... I'll have to get back to you about it. I'll see if I have an answer by the end of the episode, but I definitely know that feeling. I think I get too invested in post. I'm the sort of person that's like, I know what's coming. I'll track it, I'll track it, I'll track it. Oh, it should be here. Where's the postman? You know, I get a bit hung up on post. Um, so board games or other ways, but yeah, mostly board games. So um, that's everything I've purchased this month. I do have two review copies um, and I've had a little look at both of these, but not in depth yet. Um, but so the first is Libertalia and this is where I'm going to finish the title wrong because I keep wanting to say Wings of Gale Crest, but I'm pretty sure it's Winds of Gale Crest. It's got that little extra bit at the bottom. Um, and this is a reprint of the original game Libertalia, but with extra additions um, and more cards, I believe. Um, I've never played the original, right? So I have zero comparison points here. Um, but I did have one play of it at the weekend just to kind of see what it was all about. And so what the story is, is you're pirates and you're gathering crew members onto your ship. And they are also getting you treasures and things like that from an island. And how this works is that um, everybody has the same hand of cards. This bothered me actually a lot, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So everyone has the same hand of cards and they are characters and they are numbered and they'll have their own special abilities. And what you need to do is to add them. Sorry, for some reason, I just got my steps for the day. Thank you, watch. Um, so what happens is that you're going to play these cards in secretly. They'll be revealed in numerical order and you will activate their abilities in a particular way um, such that you can gather items from the island or you can interfere with each other's players and then they'll go on your ship at the end of the round. End of the round. You'll play over a couple of days and then you'll gather points each time from how much treasure you've gotten and other abilities and such like that. So that's kind of like, that's what it's about. But what really baffled me was that you start with the same hand of cards. So you had to, well, you see, you, you can know what everyone else is capable of playing. And keeping track of that information is something that would be okay maybe at two players, but I was trying to imagine this if you played with more people, um, how, you, how you would keep, and you know, how you would stay on top of that. Um, my big issue with this so far, I've only played once, right? So let's not call it a big issue, but that, um, myself and my opponent repeatedly played the same cards because they were the best cards to, to play in the hand in your hand at that time. And that in itself was a little problematic for me. Now that might just be we know each other very well and the kind of stuff we'll play. And maybe next time I will go, well, I, I am pretty sure he's gonna play that, so I should play this. Um it is it is gorgeous, it's beautiful. I'm not surprised Stone Meyer games always put up a spread when it comes to board games. So yeah, it's gorgeous. It doesn't take too long to play as well. Um, I could see really being fun actually um, with a group because there is a lot of kind of, oh, well, you know, I've canceled your card this turn, so you can't do that, or I can do this, or I can get rid of somebody out of your ship. You know, lots of kind of back and forth there. Um, but even at two, um, it was still pretty solid. Do you want to see um, a few more games and see if it feels a little similar each time you play? There is a good, like, deck of cards I suppose to to draw from and to have characters from when you play so we'll have to see what happens there um but yeah there's some potential I think there's a, a good game in here is it a game for me I'm not entirely sure yet but um yeah this is looking good right so one more game and this is the last thing to arrive and this is Methodology um this is from Grey Wolf Games and this is a game based on an Agatha Christie novel and already I have made a number of mistakes. <laughs> um, so the first thing to know is this game needs a minimum of three players. Whoops, I got so excited when I saw kind of a, a solve the mystery game, to be honest. I was like, I have never really played one of those and I, I was I was really excited to review it. Um, so yeah, so it turns out I need more players, so we'll gather some friends. But um, I have played it at two just to kind of see the mechanics, you know, how it fits together, but it's not really, you know, an example of how the game goes. So this game is based on the book, The Murder on the Lynx, which I have not read. Maybe I should. Um, and what the game seems to want to do is that you have a handful of cards um, that are people, places, or um, kind of objects. 
and you're trying to figure out you know who's the murderer while also trying to get away with the murder yourself it's a little interesting in that sense um, but what you're really doing is you've all these objects in your hand they are worth particular amounts of points some of them will combo together and say if you have Perot and Perot's study they'll be worth extra points and what happens is that during the game is that you are losing cards from your hand you have to place out cards as guesses you know or, or as basically as ways of of um, removing kind of what's the word getting rid of possibilities for who could have done it you're deducing that's the word I wanted you're kind of deducing who had done it by using the cards in your hand to say I think you have this card and this card and so during the game you'll have to reveal if you have certain cards and they'll be removed from your hand um, and what you want to do is keep the best cards in your hand all the way to the end um, so this is a really good looking game it's gorgeous it's absolutely huge um it's got these boards that have all of the different types of cards on them so you can um basically mark them off as you deduce things but really what you're trying to deduce is what is in somebody else's hand um and that is its own kind of mystery um so this was just you know kind of messing around with two players i don't know what the, how hard this will be to do with more because you're kind of guess well what did they have what did they have you know that kind of thing you almost feel like you might like a pen and paper um but it's good looking it doesn't take overly long to play and it's fairly straightforward and i think this is a theme that people will enjoy and possibly be very familiar with as well um so yeah i'm looking forward to trying this with some actual players that would be nice like i have an idea at least how it works but you know gosh darn it why didn't i read it more closely but here we are um i'm sure i'll find angle away so that i can tell you what it's really all about and maybe you'll want to bring it to your next game night um but yeah so reviews coming for that and libertalia in the near future um and otherwise that is everything that i have acquired this month Whew, actually yeah it did it did sound a lot more when i say it out loud i say this every month i'm like oh we didn't get anything really this month and then i write it down and i'm like oh gosh that's an awful lot of games Mm, so yeah there we go so i want to hear what you got this month um is there anything you've been eyeing up anything you know that you played that you thought was super super cool or not cool always curious to hear that too but yeah let's hear about your games and i'm going to roll on to the next section which is games i've been playing um so yeah let's go so what games have i been playing this month um definitely less than i would have liked but i think that's probably a common complaint among board gamers not just myself um, but yeah, I got a couple of games in and I definitely want to talk about this one. Um, and I think this game deserves so much more recognition than it gets. This, this is a cracking little thing. And this is Reef. Um, so Reef is a game about, well, building coral reefs. Um, and basically what you're trying to do is you are um, building kind of sets of colours um, in three dimensions to match kind of the patterns of the reef um, and by doing this you're going to get victory points and that's how you win. Um, what's really smart about reef is well firstly what it's made of it's got these big chunky pieces um, and they're absolutely one of my favorite features of the game. I think they're so much fun to stack and place together i love how colored they are i think they are just an absolute delight um and there's just something very um tactile about handling this game and some games really do have that feature very well where it's very satisfying to place the pieces and this is absolutely loaded with that um what's interesting about the game is it's fairly simple but also relatively um brain burnering at the same time which is so that you have cards on the top half of your cards it will give you these colored pieces to add to your reef always cool and the bottom half is the scoring portion and so if you can match the pattern you can get victory points um so each card in your hand can both be a way to score and a way to acquire more parts to your reef and syncing these cards together and playing them you know on your turns in the right order um is 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 really fun and definitely challenging um i don't often enjoy games in three dimensions but i do like this because it's very visual because you're you're always looking straight down at the reef so it's always seeing everything from the top 
Um, and I think that really helps for kind of assembling it and putting to it together. It's definitely a very solitary kind of game. You play with your own board and you build your own board. The only interaction you have with other players is um, which cards you acquire um, with the different patterns and things on them. But otherwise, it's up to you. And the game ends when you run out of pieces, when you get to the end. There's a certain amount for each player account. Um, and I always, like, every time I pull this out, I'm always amazed more people don't talk about it. It came out about the same time, I think, as Azul. I don't think they were that far apart. And um, because Azul took off with its chunky pieces, I think Reef just was never given the recognition it deserves. Um, so it's one I often recommend to people. It's one that I think is really fun. Um, and I just, I love how there's just something about it as a package. I think that's just a very satisfying little game. So when I'm really not sure what else to play, this is oftentimes um, what I'll take out. It doesn't take too long to play. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just fun. Like, it's just easy and fun. And yeah, I, I say this often, but okay, that's what games should be. Easy and fun. Right, so let's roll on to the second game I'll talk about. Um, I'm trying to keep it shorter because the first bit was so much longer. Um, but I did manage to have a game of Terra Mystica. Um, and yeah, that's one, I suppose, Terra Mystica is just a firm favourite with a lot of people, isn't it? Um, I was shocked to learn it had been nearly two years, I think, since I played a game with Terra Mystica. I was appalled. I was appalled when I filled in the results of the board game stats app. I was like, oh my goodness, this is terrible. Um, and I was wondering how hard it would be to basically relearn Terra Mystica when it had been some time. But I'm glad to announce that it came back fairly quickly because you, once you could see all the pieces in front of you, um, you were like, oh yeah, this does this and this does this. There was very little rule checking that had to be done. So Terra Mystica is a civilization building game. Um, although to be fair, I don't remember it being as abstract as it felt when I played it. Um, but what it is about is that there is a board of different terrain types and you're basically terraforming these terrain types to put out buildings. And the fun part about the buildings is you start with little ones, you upgrade them to bigger ones and the more stuff you put out onto the board, the more resources and mana and all sorts of good stuff you're going to get at the start of your turn. Um, one of my favourite things about Terra Mystica is the fact that there is scoring at the end of each round and it's different each time. You reveal it and you're like, oh, this is scores extra points this time. And I've always loved working towards that. Um, you can also have um, priests who believe in different elements and you can go up those tracks as well to get victory points, which is really fun. Um, but the cool part is, I suppose, is the different types of people um, and that that you can play um, and build your civilization around. They are all slightly different. They all have their kind of, you know, their are special powers um, and it's really fun to try those out and play them out on the board. So what surprised me, yeah, I suppose, the most when I played this again um, was just how... <sighs> Euro gamey it was. I don't know why I didn't remember it being that procedural because there are steps you have to go through. You have action cubes on your turn um, and money and kind of timing everything correctly. I don't know why I didn't I didn't I didn't remember it that way, but it's it's definitely yeah dry euro all over it. I also didn't remember like just how dark and things the board are, what unusual choices of colours um, that have been chosen to use it. It, it looks kind of well aged. But despite all of those things, this is still a really great game and one I still feel like I'm figuring out. Um, I never really feel like I've mastered Terra Mystica, although I can win. Um, I do feel there are certain things I should be doing and then I only realise this when the game's over and then I forget the next time I'm supposed to play. Like I can never remember if I want to build one big kind of connected city or if I want to build a bunch of separate kind of cities and then connect them afterwards. Um, <laughs> I'm still figuring that out but I just love upgrading the houses and getting different abilities it's a little bit like sides like that where you clear something off and then there are you know things underneath and I always find those kind of reveals really really really, really interesting and um, the game is quite timely um you know it motors along and before you know it it's over um and I like yeah I, I still have a big soft spot for it if, if anything playing it um, rem kind of reminded me that I really should pick up an expansion for it to just have access to some more different types of peoples to play with. Um, I think that'd be really exciting um, because I feel like I've actually played with a lot of what's in the box. And as I said earlier in this video, I love having options and I feel like Terra Mystica could do with one or two more. Um, I think the only reason I haven't bought an expansion is that the price, I think it's, it's almost as close to buying the full game as it is for the expansion. At least was the last time I checked. 
Um, but I'll probably check again and keep an eye on it. So yeah, Terra Mystica, still a firm favorite. Um, one worth checking out. Um, I always wonder, you see, should I have gotten more invested in Gaia Project, which is the same kind of game, just in space. Um, and I've played it once or twice. I don't know if it stood out to me more than Terra Mystica did. Um, but for those of you out there who own both or have played both, which would you choose? And is it just, would you, is it basically just the theme is better in space than it is in just multicolored Landia? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I would want to own both and I'm not sure I want to give up on Terra Mystica just yet. Um, yeah, it's still fun even after that two year gap. So can highly recommend. Um, brilliant. Okay, so that's everything I've been playing. Yes, there's been more than that, but here are the exemplars of games that I've been playing this month. Um, and I want to hear what you were playing too. Um, you know, I, 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 every so often I pause the video, I'm like, you, you at home, tell me about your games. And, and that's because I like hearing about them. So there's always that. All right, so um, you've made it to the end of the games portion. The next bit is just gonna me having a bit of a chit chat if you wanna hear about why my background looks like this um, and other interesting details. Um, so yeah, roll all over there if for all of that stuff. I've officially done far too much today. For anybody curious, my heart rate is now at 120. Um, yeah, I'm the sort of person who kind of, I have a lot of anxiety and stress. When my heart rate goes up, it has a tendency to stay up. Um, and this is not unusual. Um, I gotta love that filming the video, like usually counts for exercise um, on any of the fitness watches and things like that. Um, but God, yeah, today, today I'm feeling it. I think I've done one too many things. Um, yeah, so what's been happening around here? I'm gonna start with what's going on in the background. What do you guys think? Um, I'm really excited. It's not entirely together yet, but I'm like 80% of the way there. Um, and this sign says everything you need to know about me as a human being and as a gamer. Uh, yeah, that this is absolutely everything. And for ages, ever since actually I changed to, to Good L Games, I really wanted to have a kind of a neon sign. Um, and part of that is, is that my backdrop or setting or whatever you want to call it here, I always wanted to do a kind of an intimate fireside look, hence you have the, the fire. Um, but that seems to be very difficult um, to achieve in such a small space. Um, like I'm filming in about like two meters by a meter here. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of room to play with. Um, but when I saw this neon sign, I absolutely fell in love. I was like, I, I have to have to have it. Um, but I found it on a website and the website didn't ship to Ireland. They only shipped to the UK. Um, but fortunately enough, um, I have an address in the UK I can post things to. So I ordered it and I waited and I waited and I waited and nothing happened. Um, got in contact with the company and they're like, oh, your order has been canceled. And we're like, why? Why has my order been canceled? Oh, because my credit card has an Irish address on it as opposed to a UK one. And I was gutted. I'm not gonna lie, I was really sad because it just, you know, something that's just so you. You're like, yes, this is me, I, I have to have it. And I was gutted. Um, and the fun thing was with this, it said it was an online exclusive, it was only available online or whatever, but they have an actual store somewhere in Cork. And I happened to be there um, looking for something completely different. And I walked around the corner and I saw my sign on the wall and I was like, oh my God, it's here. Uh, but no, it was not. That was the sample sign in the shop. They had sold out of my sign and I was, I was so sad. I think it's cause I'd given up on it. And then for a whole moment there, it kind of was real. Um, but this is where I'm lucky to have the most amazing husband in the world and not just for this but for all sorts of other reasons um, was that he rang around the different shops um, that were nearby or in other counties and he found a shop that had my sign still and we got in the car and we drove for like an hour and a half to get there to get my sign. So this is the saga of you know let's stay home um, and I'm so excited that it's here I finally got it hung up and everything and because I got a neon sign I kind of had to change everything here as well um, because nothing kind of fit anymore so as you know it's like I got rid of my big chair it was so big it was just taking up so much of the frame I was like I can't hold on to it forever I had to give up on the dream of the wing back chair um which is a little sad but I'm hoping we're like getting a little bit closer to like you know nighttime chats not quite around the fireside but maybe in like a gentleman's club or something like that or a gentle gamers club or whatever we'd like to call it so we're going with kind of the wood and the flames and like the soft yellow 
So like I said, nearly there, but I'm really, really excited about it. Uh, it's really um, allowed me, I suppose, to use my giant light I bought a couple of months ago because um, it's the only light on here right now. So I was like all the way up <laughs> and I think it's made this kind of nice setting. So I hope you guys like it as much as I do. I hope it look, I hope it look a bit more polished. Um, so that would be great. So, yeah, that's the, that's the big excitement kind of you know changing things around here um and, lear and learning to live with it um so, <laughs> so that's been fantastic um so yeah in other news i suppose less board gamey stuff is that um last month i talked about getting obsessed with the batman movie and going to the cinema and leaving the house to see it um so i'll just fill you in most of you here know this if you're watching this personal but you've probably watched the other bit which is that you know i'm horribly depressed and anxious and i don't leave the house very often because it's really really stressful so it's a big deal to go and see batman a couple of times on my own in the cinema you know what everyone else gets to take for granted was a really big deal for me um but i liked i liked it so much and i like got looking into films and cinematography so hence some of the background stuff and some of the things i'll be doing here in the future um i signed up to like a cinema kind of club thing where you pay a very small amount of money and you can go see every film in the cinema once um so i've been going to the cinema um at least once a week um to see something which is a big big deal for me um but i've been having lots of fun um i suppose like getting out is still scary and it's still really stressful but it's been cool to kind of enjoy movies and to kind of pick that up i suppose as a bit of a hobby um it's kind of funny how all my hobbies end up slightly interconnected um so if anybody wants to know my opinions on movies um i have a little twitter thread going where every time i see something in the cinema i make a little you know not quite review, but a little thing about it. So I've got to see some really cool stuff, including the new Nicolas Cage movie I saw last night. It was amazing. I haven't laughed that much in ages. Um, so there's always that. I think you can find me on Letterboxd as well, if anybody actually uses that app where you can keep track of your movies. It was recommended to me on Twitter and I said I'd try it out. Um, so yeah, I'm there if you want to try find me. I think I'm just good owl. Yeah, I got rid of the games because, you know, it was movies, it's not games. So um, that's been really exciting. And I've watched some really great movies um, and left the house a lot more. Um, and I think this is all kind of tied into the fact that um, I changed my medication relatively recently. And what it's done is somehow made me able to do things I thought were very hard to do or out of reach. Um, but it's also had its own side effects too. So I'm, I'm also super sad, <laughs> but it's amazing. Um, what it feels like to actually be able to do things like go to the cinema, I actually managed to go swimming, um, which was super exciting and doing all this kind of background stuff. I've also been doing a ton of photography. I've been leaving the house with my camera for photographs, which is nuts, like absolutely nuts. If I thought I was doing this a month or two ago, I probably would have laughed at myself. Um, but if you enjoy seeing pictures of Ireland, I'm really into birds at the minute. I really like taking pictures of birds, wingspan, you know, you can't, you can't but help um, yourself. Um, so those are go on Twitter, I think mostly as well. Um, I can't think of anywhere else good to put those because I'm like, I'm sorry this isn't games, but would anybody like to see this? So um, yeah, there's those, there's, those, there's those there as well. So it's been odd for me having multiple hobbies because I'm normally really focused and I would only be doing one thing. So it's been very strange to kind of have board games not be in the forefront, but be like down a step and getting excited about other things as well. Um, it's nice that they are all connected because board games got me into videography and photography. And now I'm kind of looping those back in another way. So yeah, it's been a very strange month altogether because I'm doing stuff, but it's very exhausting. But but it is getting done. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I I don't know. Um, I would love to hear about your other hobbies, if you have any, and how do you, you know, balance them with your board games? I'm pretty sure I've asked this question before. I just think I'm such a focused individual um, that I work really, really hard on, on specific things and I will absolutely give it 150% and give it my all and then burn myself out. Um, on it. So I, I like the pace at which board, um, good old games, I always said board game inquisition, it never really leaves, um, is going at the moment um, where I'm not like pestering myself to do tons of videos, but then I can take my time with them. So that's nice too. Um, and I have a couple of other kind of ideas up my sleeve. Um, and this new setting, I think, I think it feels right. I think it's nice. 
Um, I've no idea. I'm, I'm going to add some lamps. I think that's what I'm missing to give a kind of a more, you know, evening club kind of thing. Since I can't have a wing back chair in here, there just isn't enough room. And I can't afford enough kind of le leather chairs and like lovely dark wooden cabinets or whatever. Um, so yeah, we're making the best of what we've got here. Um, but thanks for joining in. That's what I've been up to. I'm looking forward to hearing all about your month um, and hopefully next month I will have some more exciting things to talk about. I'm looking forward to playing some games actually. There's something very um, reinvigorating about making this video that reminds me how fun games are and how much I like playing them and telling you guys about them. Like there's something about this, it's very life affirming, <laughs> I guess. Um, so yeah, so this was April. Right. I, I had to check like 10 times today what month it is. Is it really April? Yes. April 26th. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so I will see you all next month and tune in again for more all sorts of board game stuff, um, reviews and things. So like and subscribe and all that jazz. Um, and I'll see you next time. So thanks everybody for watching. Take care. Bye bye.